back to FOD Shorts. We're Freedom on Deck. We're a terrestrial radio show heard out on the FM stations in Long Island, Connecticut, and Rhode Island on 94.9 News Now and Stimulating Talk. I'm your host, Chet Martin. Alongside me is my co-host, C.V. Burton. What's up, C.V.? Nothing much. How's it going with you? Everything's good. You know, I haven't been chased and uh, chased out of any traffic stops by Antifa and told to go right. So no. I, I have that going for me. Yeah, you got and, that right. And we're going to start with that. You know, last week there was some video that came out of Antifa in Oregon um, directing someone that was driving through the city. And uh, I think it was the city of Portland, and telling them that they needed to go right. Oh yeah, and I saw that. When he asked them, they said, "None of your business," because we said so. And then uh, one of the other wonderful gentlemen from Antifa said, "Oh, you're you're a little whitey." Yeah, I saw you're that. A white piece of shit. Now, they directed him to go right when he wanted to go straight. And the guy who was saying that to him was white. <laughs> yes, he was white, of course. Because, ah, you're a little whitey, aren't you? I'm like, oh, this, this, aren't yeah, you? This is, the, this is the self-hate from the right. Yeah. And when they, when they accosted him in the intersection on the other side, he gets out of the car. Luckily, he didn't get beat with the pipes himself. Yeah. But they beat his car with the pipes. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it, was, it was just unbelievable to me to see that in the video, you had police officers sitting there and watching it. Mm -hmm. Now, my question is, were they told to stand down, CV? I heard Why that... Why would they sit there and watch that? I heard that the mayor of Portland also doubles as the police chief. I don't know if that's correct, but I heard somebody say that. It may be. Okay. And... Obviously, he's a far left loon, but you know what? This was reminiscent of. Do you remember Charlottesville? And yeah, I remember it. Everybody listening to this, you should go to YouTube and look up the uh, Charlottesville car uh, ramming situation. It's the same exact scenario. They were beating the car. The car was surrounded by Antifa, and they were beating the car with batons and metal pipes and things and the guy was totally barricaded he couldn't go forward and he couldn't go backwards without hurting anybody so he he rammed forward and he couldn't get through so he put the car in reverse and went backwards and you know knocked over a couple of people that way but he wasn't aiming for people he was aiming to get the hell out of there and, and a woman died a woman yeah a died. white woman died right and they called this a racist attack uh what and then, well, he, he was trying to escape this attack, and he ran over this woman. Right. And unfortunately, she died. Look, look it up. If, it's still not, if it hasn't been scrubbed off of YouTube, it's the only video. Strangely, it's the only video. You would think there'd be more. But and, anyway. I'm sorry, and I'm sorry to say it like this, but looking into her background, that girl that died, she was an extreme leftist. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. He was an antique. And there's, and there's no indication whatsoever that the driver was a KKK guy at all. There's no indication no. of that whatsoever. They, they no, assumed I, it, but that's not true. No, and I would like to know what's, what's happening with that case. I, I really haven't been following up on that. But No, no, because they swept it under the rug. I think he was uh, exonerated in court, and the, they, the news won't report on it. But my, my point was is that what they did in, in Portland, what you saw on tape in Portland was they were trying to instigate a similar situation where they would create a road, road rage incident so that somebody might get hurt so that they could say, oh, look, whitey, white KKK guy did it. Right. That, that's what they were trying to do. Right, and the same thing could have happened in this situation in Oregon, right. Portland, Oregon, where if this guy had ran someone over, they would have said, said, look, you know, white man, KKK from South Carolina ends up killing one of the Antifa members, and yeah. and that shows you that the Trump supporters are violent. That's what they were trying you know, to do. Here's the thing that's happening now, though. Mm. Yet Eric Holder released a statement saying, Michelle Obama says when they go low, we go high. No. I say when they go low, we kick them. <laughs> and he said that's what the Democrat Party's about. You know why I laughed? I, 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 the only reason I laughed was because Brian 
said that our motto should be, Freedom on Deck's motto should be, when they go low, we go lower. And I, I'm sorry, I left it. I laughed inappropriately. Uh, but go no, ahead. That's a, no, that's all right. It, when, we, when they go low, we go lower. <laughs> it's not saying when they go low, we kick them in the yeah. you know, kick them in the mouth. Yeah, I that's would like I would like Holder to, I would like Holder's minions of uh, disturbed individuals who live live on the fringe of sanity to try that on me. I really would like to because you know what? Anytime somebody tries to kick me, I always try to grab the foot. You know, because when you grab the foot. You can knock the guy over really easily. Well, it's not just Eric Holder saying this. Yeah, yeah. Also, Bernie Sanders, our favorite uh, communist out there, said, We are the Axis. We are the Axis. Oh, the Axis. We are the Axis. Of we evil. Are. The Trump supporters. Oh, we're the, the uh, oh, we're the Axis of evil. We're the Axis of evil. And don't forget, Madam Hillary, old cabbage farts came out. <laughs> old cabbage farts came out and said, We can't discuss things civilly with people that are against our values. Yeah. So what she's saying is you need to attack them. You need to because be uncivil. You can't sit down and have a conversation yeah. with these people. Yeah. She is giving marching orders to the violent left leftist yeah. uh, 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 the wing of the Democrat Party that we're seeing right now, CB. Yeah. I, I heard Michael Savage make a point that I've been making all along, but this is the first time I heard him say it, was that the left are trying to gin up violence so that we will react so that they can have an issue and say, we are the violent ones. And try to, you know, gaslight us, turn the tables on us and say, we're the crazy ones. And you, you, that's what I, haven't I been saying that? Yes, you, of course you've been saying that. And, and, I, and I understand that too. But there gets to a point where you have to defend yourself. If someone's going to kill me, I'm going to kill them. Right. You know, it, it, we have to eventually say, fuck what they think. Right. Fuck what the media says. Fuck what the Democrats say. I have to defend myself. Absolutely. And excuse my language. I wasn't, I wasn't saying the F-bomb to get attention on this podcast. No, I like it. it. No, I, say it more. The <laughs> truth is, the truth is that we're under attack. Yeah. We are under attack not only by Antifa. Antifa is just the creation that hatched under Obama, right? Right. I mean, this, this was created under Obama. This was not created under President Trump. Mm -hmm. This is a violent left-wing uh, 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 militant group, in my opinion, yeah. that is being funded. And you know what? I would. Here's one thing I would say to President Trump if I was with him. I would say you got to get a hold of this group. This group, you have to get a hold of. I mean, we, we worry about terrorist groups throughout the world. We worry about ISIS. We worry about Al Qaeda. We worry about uh, the, the communist groups in Russia and China. You got to get a hold of Antifa mm -hmm. because Antifa is in its infancy, CB. Yeah. They it are is not in the. It, once, it, once it turns up the volume, which I think will happen in 2020. Who the hell knows what's going to happen? They are the brown shirts of the Socialist Party. Uh, Absolutely. You know, I, you know, I'm acting all jovial and I'm laughing about this because on one hand, I'm mocking them. Because I'm basically saying, okay, bring it on. I want to, I want to see you bring it on. I want, I, want, I want to see the videotape of our side hitting back because I'm going to really enjoy it. And, but on the other hand... You know, you, you sent me an article of Rand Paul talking about how this is going to escalate and somebody's going to get assassinated or, mur or murdered, and the blood yep. is going to be on the left stream media's hands, and and the uh, and the politician and the left wing politicians who are inciting this violence, and it's going to be on their hands, and uh, so that's a ser so that's a serious thing. It will be on their hands. But will they, will they show it that way? No. Yeah. And, you know, it was interesting watching this interview with Rand Paul's wife. Yeah. Where she said after the attack by oh, his and she's neighbor. A she's a cutie, too. She is a cutie. And she said after the attack by his neighbor, his communist neighbor that uh, mm -hmm. broke his ribs when he wasn't looking, yeah. by the way. He, yeah. didn't have the, he didn't have the courage to go in front of Rand Paul when he was... Uh, 
you know, like man to man, face to face, couldn't do that. Oh. But when he attacked him, and after what Rand Paul said, she said that she sleeps with a loaded gun mm-hmm. in her mantle. And she should. And he and broke, she, and, and that, that neighbor, I don't know how close a neighbor he was, maybe he was from the neighborhood, or I don't know what, but he broke like six ribs of Rand Paul, and he was seriously injured, and he was in the hospital, and the news didn't really report on it. And he was also at that same baseball field where uh, Representative Scalise was shot and almost killed. Right. So, and I mean, he's guy. really, so they're really shooken up, the, uh, the, Rand, uh, the Paul family. Oh, the Paul family's been through it all. And, yeah. you know, he's, he's one of the guys that has visited the White House the most that have ended the senators, and he's actually become very close with President Trump. Yep. And that's just turned up the rhetoric against him. Mm-hmm. It, it turns just, out, I found out that it turns out that um, uh, Donald Trump is a big uh, Ayn Rand fan. You know, the one who wrote uh, Fountainhead and Atlas Shrugged and all that. And mm-hmm. she's a philosopher. You know, she pleases in individuality. And, uh, you know, doing things for your own reasons, not just for, uh, you know, generosity to, towards other people. But, um, and Rand Paul is named after Ayn Rand. So I think they have a little bit of a connection there. What's scary about what Hillary Clinton said when she said that you can't be civil with us, is she, she said Democrats have to be tougher. Yeah. That was her quote. And I'm reading this from MSN. Now, what does she mean by tougher? Because they are already attacking us. They're already beating us over the head with locks. They're already chasing us down the streets. They're already throwing urine. They're already throwing eggs on women. Yeah, what yeah. does she mean by tougher? She so means... Does she mean that we need to kill? No, we need to kill conservatives? Probably, probably she means that, but I think they should start by stop taking estrogen pills and, and, and stop putting women in their front lines. You know, if you if you notice, if if you ever look on YouTube at the Antifa creating violence in their riots and stuff, you always see these women on the front lines, yeah, and these like wussy men, like in the second tier, you know, being egged on by the women, and the women are yeah. leading them. So right. that's a little questionable. Well, I was looking. This is another thing I wanted to talk to you about. Um, The Stanford uh, College Republicans put out this post. Um, Today, the Stanford College College Republicans experienced the violent and totalitarian behavior of the unhinged Stanford left during a Change My Mind tabling event regarding the presumption of innocence and the Brett Kavanaugh confirmation. Stanford president was assaulted by Melinda Hernandez, a sophomore at Stanford. Hernandez approached our president, hit him in the chest, and forcibly pushed him back. Our president is pressing full charges against Hernandez, yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. But anyway, I put these posts and these pictures up. They destroyed the table of the Stanford Republicans. Uh, They attacked the president, and it was a woman that went up and assaulted the male president of the Stanford Republican. uh, uh, And it's... It's insane to watch. It, there, it, there you go. It, that's exactly my point, right? Yeah. Uh, that's exactly what I was saying. Is the women are are leading them, but uh, that reminds me of uh, like a couple months back. I think it was like a year ago or something, where this uh, principal of a college was like uh, chased up into his uh, office, and he had to lock the door, and they wanted to get get him off the campus because he was. Because he was white. I don't know, something really crazy like that. They were taking over the college. Does anybody remember that? Yes. I believe they started in the library. It was Black yeah. Lives Matter. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I believe that occurred in North Carolina. I can't remember the university. But I remember they went into the library, and they started telling all the white people that were in there that they're guilty of systemic racism. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 systemic racism. Systemic racism, yeah. and then when, I guess, the principal had come in, they chased him, 
and uh-huh. uh, he locked himself in and eventually got out. Nothing happened to him. Yeah. But and it just shows you that they're, they're you know, these, these people, they, here's the thing, though, CV, they are greatly outnumbered by us. If we I got know. some balls and came together and told them to fuck off yeah. and stood together, they would back the fuck down. But the but, problem is, the problem is they're well funded and they push the buttons, and they're more willing to do it than we are, aren't they? Right. And that phrase, systemic racism, was coined by guess who? Barack insane Obama. Mm. He coined that phrase and he, turning people insane, and uh, the people who are already insane are, are getting violent, and the ones who weren't insane are becoming insane. And then well, the next step is then going to be violent, too. You know, Lenin and Marx talked about class warfare and, and pitting the races against each other. R- right. You know, and systemic racism, that's what that's talking about right there. It's, an, it's a communist idea. Absolutely. It's saying that, well, because they are that way, and because they look a certain way, they automatically are racists. Oh, yeah. If, you're, if you have a certain skin tone, you're a racist. Yeah. Doesn't matter your beliefs. Yeah. Doesn't matter your religion. Doesn't matter how you've lived your life. You're already a racist. Yeah. Isn't that something? Yeah, that was Hitler too. You know. Yes, it was creating creating a boogeyman, and you know, uh, rabble rousing the people to to commit acts of riots and violence. It's just getting out of control. I'm way so, out of control. So what do we do to counteract Antifa, man? That's the big question. See, I don't know. It's, you know, you, you say that, you know, it's a lack of balls, but it's, it's also about being law-abiding because they are breaking the law. There's, there are laws against wearing masks even. Right, At, but, nobody, but nobody's arresting them for it. Yeah, so, but, we, but we are law-abiding, so we won't go to, we won't sink to their level. Uh, necessarily, and um, when uh, you know, I'm calling for everybody to wear their Trump shirts, their Trump hats, and to go out there and wear it proudly, and let them try to push you. If they if they lay your hand, if they lay their hand on you, if they push you, you could push them back with the same force, maybe a little bit harder, but you are just definitely ju- justified. To push back if they lay their hands on you, but if they don't lay their hands on you, if they're just shouting in your face, well then just shout in their face, back, it's just as louder, louder. But the instant they touch you, you could grab their hand and bend their fingers back, and elbow them in the face. That's what I would do. The sad thing is that they're bullies, yeah. right? And you know what a bully does? A bully operates methodically, so that if you're alone. They're going to come after you, and even if you're with your wife or your family, and it's a gathering. There's going to be 10 to 15 people to 30 people to 40 people to 50 people surrounding you. And most people just want to get the hell out of that situation. What I think has to happen, what I really think has to happen, is we have to figure out where they're going, when they're going there, and we have to show up. Yeah. Militantly, yeah. with militias, I'm talking about the Proud Boys. I'm talking about the Oath Keepers. I'm talking about the Defenders of Freedom. I'm talking about going there, showing up in solidarity with our brothers and our sisters, and not backing down to their asses. Because yeah. it is going to happen. I will tell you, there's going to be a, a moment in time yeah. where e- either somebody gets assassinated or it gets it. The line will be crossed yeah. where we, the patriotic Americans, have to step forward and do something about it. Right. I've always said that the line, the red line, is freedom of speech. When they go to a university to shut down somebody who's speaking, a conservative, or somebody they don't like, and they're trying to shut down their speech, that to me is a red line because what is more American than free speech? And if you're trying to shut down free speech, that's that is the most fundamental abuse 
of a person's rights that you can do. Well, what do they do at the universities every time Milo Yiannopoulos stops by? What right. do they do at the universities every time, you know, uh, even Ben Shapiro, who me and you don't really like, right? they they go and stop Ben Shapiro from speaking. Right, but... And he's, and he's not a radical right-wing Trump-supporting Republican. He's a checker-pants country club Republican, and they go and stop him. That's the red line. That's what I'm saying is that's, that's when you go to war. Right. I mean, that's when you have to really hit back. And, you know, people listening to this might think I'm, you know, calling for violence. I'm not. I'm saying stand up against them, and if they touch you, if they so much as lay a pinky on you, then punch him in the nose. No, because, listen, here's, here's the truth, CV. We're not calling for violence because we're not saying when they show up and have a rally, go and just beat the crap out of them. The problem is when they go and have a rally, they're beating the crap out of everyday American citizens. Yeah, oh yeah, it's true. It, you know, that, that's the problem here. That guy, listen, that guy that they pulled over yeah. in Portland, Oregon, he didn't have a Trump sticker on his car. He, they didn't know what political affiliation he had, Right. whether he was Republican or Democrat. They didn't know. What was, were they screaming the whole time? He was an old oh, white lady. He was an old white man. He was an old white man. So you know what, CV? It could easily be any liberal that's right. listening to us right now that could be pulled over by Antifa and accosted. And I'm a white and man, and I'm getting older and older every day. <laughs> and, and I'll tell you, and I'll tell you, CV, the liberals need to wake up because it's going to knock on their door. Yeah. These are the brown shirts of our time, and once they run out of us, they'll go to them. They might even go to them first because yeah. they're the weakest link. Our people Don't think they won't. They didn't know that TV. For all we know, that guy was a liberal. Yeah. Well, maybe he's not a liberal anymore after that. Well, maybe not. We we don't know. But yeah. my my point is, what they did was, you know, they didn't. There was nothing to that guy that made them attack him. They did it for the reason of anarchy. It was just pure anarchy. That's all they want. Well, like I said, my theory was is that you know they saw an old white man driving a car through their protest or demonstration or riot, whatever you want to call it, and they were trying to incite him to some kind of violence. You notice they didn't, yeah. really, they didn't really hit him when he came out of the car, but they, they, were, the hope, car. they were hoping to hell that he would hit them, either with, with his fist or with his car, so that they can cry foul. But don't forget, there have been instances where it has happened. Don't forget the professor... That hit the uh, the Trump the gentleman that supported President Trump, and he was hit with the bike lock. Oh yeah, out of nowhere. That was this horrible. This does happen. So this guy he didn't get hit, but he's lucky. Right. Right. So you have to worry about this. And these Antifa thugs, I do believe that violence is ingrained in them, in their heads. Yeah, the, the, it's ingrained in their heads by Obama, Holder, Hillary, Waters. You there name you it, Booker. There you go. It's all, and, and the media. Know, here's, and here's the scary part. Now the Democrats are no longer wearing the sheep's clothing. They're showing that they're the wolves. Yep. Now they're saying it. Eric Holder straight up came out and said, kick him. He said, kick him. Can you imagine if Donald yeah. Trump said, kick him? Can you imagine if Ted Cruz said kick him? One Can you time. Imagine one time Trump said, said kick him. One time Trump said at a rally, you know, don't you feel like punching that guy in the face? Yeah, because he was punching, kicking, and screaming, and 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 uh, and cursing at his uh, at his people and interrupting his rally that he paid for. There's my point. You know, and that's that's also obstructing freedom of speech when you go to somebody else's event. You can't go to somebody's uh, event or a wedding or, or a speaking engagement and shut down their speech. That's not freedom. That's not freedom of speech for to shut down somebody else's freedom of speech. So they yeah, have... he said that one time, and then he was criticized for it. He never said it again. 
But these people on the left, they say it every day. And they're all saying it. Yep. All of them. There's not one of them. You know, here's a question I wanted to ask you, CV, before we get going. Okay. Why aren't there centrist Democrats like Jim Webb coming out and saying, we don't align ourselves with this, we don't align ourselves with Antifa, we don't align ourselves with what Eric uh, Holder is saying? Why, why is there not more of that? There has to be some Democrats out there that don't believe in this, right? I don't know, but I, I'm watching the news reports and they're having these lefties make apologies for Hillary and Holder and Booker and all these people. Making apologies, saying, well, he didn't really mean that. You know, but if you ask them, well, do you denounce violence? They don't, they don't really answer the question. They just right, they, like, they, they keep falling back saying, on, like, well, they didn't mean that. Right. Do, do, do you denounce what she said? Well, they didn't really mean that. Well, hold on. If it was Trump and it was a Republican, you'd say, how dare you say they didn't mean that? Right. And you Char- know what I mean? At Charles Payne, I saw him answer somebody like that, and he said, well, somebody watching TV might interpret it differently than you did. You may not interpret it as inciting violence when Hillary says you don't have to be civil to Trump supporters, but some other schmuck watching who's unhinged and is on medication might seriously take that as you better go be be uncivil and be violent. We've, we're lucky, CV, that none of our elective leaders on the GOP side have been killed yet. I know. Because we already came close. But you're absolutely right. Our people have to show up. They have to show up in droves. And push back. I agree. It does have to happen. But listen, um, everybody, if you want to hear more of Freedom on Deck, go to 949newsnow.com this Sunday, 3 to 5. Or if you're in Connecticut, Long Island, and Rhode Island, that's 949 on your dashboard. And you can just listen to us that way. And it's 949 News Now and Stimulating Talk. Or if you miss the show... You can also go to our BitChute channel, Freedom on Deck. You can go to our YouTube channel, Freedom on Deck. Or you can go to freedomondeck.com. And we've got a lot of good guests coming up. Uh, this weekend, we're going to have Karen Strawn, who's actually an advocate for men. And she's a woman. Can you believe that, CV? There's actually a woman out there that advocates, uh, advocates for men. Yeah, a lot of women actually like men, believe it or not. <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> And then we have Josh and Nicole Landers. They are one of our favorite people, two of our favorite people to bring on. And they talk about the bullying that's going on in their school. Their children have been through it, and they have a bunch of anti-bullying sites. And um, just for your information, CV, and for everybody out there, I've been talking to the people that handle uh, Dr. Alveda King, Martin Luther King Jr.'s daughter, and she's going to be coming on wow. in the next few weeks so this is a big deal uh we're very happy about that and uh cv i'm gonna see you on sunday buddy well i look forward to it thank you show up on sunday freedom on deck